the first one. All right, we are recording. Welcome uh, in. This is your sandbox project for um, Tuesday, September 13th. Ready to go, Dims? Yes. Cool. Hi, everybody. So let's start with the resubmission. I think this was the only one which was a resubmission. Um, they ended up going to the serverless working group. And this uh, the project name is uh, serverless devs. Um, did anybody get a chance to look at this one? This I took a brief look at it. Uh, I noticed that it's MIT licensed. Um, and I was trying to figure out the reason, but was the field cut off in here? Uh, yeah, everything I can't really use. Oh, let I me fix it. I can't really on. use give me, the give me a moment. reason. Okay. Because I was trying to understand the reason, and they put a bunch of stuff beforehand. If you scroll up, Dims, there's a link to the English version there. Oh, you scrolled past it. Oops. You scrolled past it the other way. Right after the header. There you go. English. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took me a minute too. My T. Yes. All of them. Okay. I, I only got the briefest of looks at this because it was further down and I started at the top. It was one of the later ones that I got to. Yep. Um, but it looks to be some kind of serverless framework. But I couldn't exactly tell why they wanted it to be in the CNCF um, to understand right. that. And, and then there was the MIT license that caught my attention. Uh, yeah, the MIT license is OK. We can, uh, we can do contingency ba based on you changing license. I think what they are trying to do here is um, you, know, you are a normal application developer. You, you have some serverless code. You want to run it. You, you, know, you want to run it somewhere, right? Like you can pick where you want to run it. Um, you, know, you can generate a template based on you know, different languages. So it's like a menu driven thing and it will generate a bunch of stuff that will help you deploy to one of these uh, serverless uh, runtimes. Uh, so it, it tries to make it easy for people who are starting their uh, serverless journey. And that is what I got out of it. I would agree with that. It's focused really more on the developer experience, but it's also um, heavily focused on serverless deployments to third party cloud. There is, um, I believe, some documentation around open function compatibility, but it's not very robust or in depth, at least that I was able to come across. Overall, I mean, the project is two years old, pretty steady piece of development. Um, nothing that kind of stands out as being potentially um, problematic or hindering, but I think the the question comes in since they've already presented to the serverless working group, um, and this is a reapplication, how they fit within cloud native. Yeah, I think I, I think I want to like help them by bringing them on for sure. Uh, the other one that triggers also is like, hey, uh, does a service serverless working group, do they need to be a SIG at this point? Because there's lots of projects already. So that's a different conversation. We can have it with them, uh, but uh, for the purposes here, I I feel okay with, uh, uh, where did it go? Did you, did you already fix it, uh, Amy? I still can't see stuff. Yeah, refresh. Um, what I've done here is make sure that everything is wrapping. Okay. So you should be able to actually like get in here. Um, uh, let's go left to right. <laughs> uh, no. okay. so we saw this one. Oh no, something uh, not screwed. Something not working still. Uh, website URL. We already went through the website. Um, project roadmap. They do have something there already. Code of conduct. Um, IP policy. Okay, yeah, this this is the one that will help us relate to existing stuff. So open function. Yeah, they are so they know what else is there. They are in the process of working with other people, which makes me definitely feel better. Um, Oops, 
this one, okay? Oh, I see, I can't do this. We've discovered a fundamental limitation of Google Sheets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Edge cases, we find them all the time. Okay. Um, this one's a little new. Now, and this is from Alibaba, right? Um, so, okay, so any objections, right? Like, is there anything that you see here? Okay, so uh, Amy, let's call for a vote. All right, vote is open. Okay, uh, scrolling back to the top, um, container SSH. There's another okay. uh, reapplication. Um, they've not called it out line 12. This is Cubescape. So if we can drop to that one next. Cubescape. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Cubescape. Okay. So open source tooling, providing a single pane of glass for Kubernetes security, um, NSACSA, MITRE, RBAC, CICD pipelines. Uh, anybody? Uh, what did, sorry, did they, sorry, is this a reapplication? Yes. yes. Yeah, so what did we, I, I can't remember what we asked them to do last time. I do remember, but what did we ask them to Why did we ask them to come back? I believe we asked them to come back due to a lack of clarity in the project and the direction. And I know that we asked them to present to tag security. Um, so the maintainer um, reached out to me to verify that they did everything that we asked them to do. They have, they presented to tag security, they've gotten better um, vision and direction to move forward in. They're working on their community growth and development. Um, I think they're in a really good place to continue to move forward. How do they exact, how do they do what they do? Um, do you know, Emily? I do not know offhand. It's okay. been a couple of months since I talked to them. So they scan um, nodes, they scan YAML files uh, was uh, as far as I got. Um, and, you know, they'll tell you if something is not right. Scan YAML files. Uh, okay, they support air gapped. So they have a CLI and SAS. So you can control all the things that you can scan, where you um, NSA scan NSA stuff. Single pane of glass, risk analysis, security compliance, RBAC visualizer, and image vulnerabilities scanning. And they support all the CACD stuff. Uh, did you figure out this? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I, can, I have an arm in Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So Armo and Cubescape, right? Armo, Cubescape. Yeah. So it's probably a startup that is behind this. So it's based yes, on- Yes, yes it is. And I had some conversations with them because um, there's also a SaaS service that it submits to. Yeah. Um, which was very unclear how much of it was open source and how it was related to the project and what the boundaries were at the time. Um, so. um, so do you have any concerns about yeah, so my, my, my concern is that this, the SaaS service to which it submits your results is not open source. 
and is also called Cubescape. Oh, um, called Cubescape. Okay. Yeah. So, as far as I can, this is not open, this is not an open source service. It communicates to a private SaaS service, and the boundaries between that service and the project are not at all clear. Um, so I will say going th through their documentation, they do have um, instructions on running it offline in a air gapped environment. Okay, so they're probably building, they're using the engine in their um, service also, I guess. Is the you default, know, if you don't do anything, automatically just work with their SaaS? So. I don't know the answer. Um, uh, no, I believe that it doesn't. Um, So just staring at the... I believe it works offline by default and you have to do submit, but it doesn't have a way to... Um, yeah, so you have to do minus minus submit on the command line, but there's no configuration as to who you want to submit to other services or anything. Like there's, it's basically... Submit results that keeps getting SAS version. Is the version that you uh, self host, um, does anybody know if that's open source or is that a proprietary software you then self run in your offline I environment? I can't post code for it in this organization. I mean, a CLI that, that's tightly coupled to a startup SaaS um, isn't something we should probably have in this, the CNCF, yep. uh, right? Because then that plays up one vendor over others in an open source project. Right, so uh, let's ask a specific question, get the answer and um, based on the answer, or do we just say contingent uh, to this being a standalone a thing that can be installed in somebody, uh, uh, you know, they do cover that, right? Air gap. But it, it has like 70, over 70 contributors. Yeah. So it cannot just be their own stats, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it works without the SAS. Uh, so that's a different. But, 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 but that, but it... So uh, what's without a SAS implies that anybody can set, set up Cubescape in their environment and they can use the CLI tool to submit to their own Cubescape instance. If that well, is no, to, to, well, to run, no, they can use it to run locally. I don't, I, I don't know if they can submit it to their own instance, but they can run, they can run the checks locally and get a report so, out, which is not, Yes, I, as far as I can understand that the SAS is just collecting the data from these reports. But I'm not... Um... So it's coupled to a SAS to submit reports to, but there's no methodology to run the software of the SAS yourself. That's not being submitted. And they have no, mean to, no means to submit pull request for other SASs you could submit it to? I didn't hear all of the call because I, I watched that video in, in chat. At least here you see that you can have local results, but I don't know if you can persist them in any way or analyze them in the air gap environment. Persisting the output of that within the cluster is on their roadmap under planning. It's the first thing. Okay, so um, what uh, what we what can we tell them? What we can tell them is 
uh, hey, um, the people should be able to run Kubescape in their environments, uh, Kubernetes environments, conformant Kubernetes environments. And if, uh, and the CLI should be able to, uh, they should be able to submit whatever they need to submit to the local instance uh, and decouple their specific SaaS out of this equation. Um, that's what we can tell them, right? As phrase that wouldn't require any open source server or persistent yeah. component. Yeah, without needing uh, their SaaS, people should be able to do what they need, what they want to do. Reframing this as a positive statement, we yeah. want them to allow people to run an open source version of their SaaS locally. Yep. There should be no coupling to a proprietary SaaS, yeah. Correct. Uh, and the naming would have to be resolved because the SaaS and the project are both have the same name. I know. Okay, so that's three things we are calling out between the three three folks just now. Uh, do you want to write this down, Amy? I got a note in chat. Better decoupling from SAS is a requirement for onboarding, or are we actually at the point of not letting them in due to this? Um, it's almost like asking a question. I don't know. Well, that's that's why I'm like, the, I think we yeah. need to be more clear here. Yeah. Um, de so decouple their SAS from the open source project. And, it, you know, which implies um, that the running the whole stack, including the person, okay, needs to be possible with local open source. Yes. What were the other things that we told just now? Okay, I will take Richard. And, comment. and, um, and, yeah, and naming. Split naming. The, oh, they sure. can't have. Okay. I mean, we, we, we have out with naming after but in this case where the project's called Kubescape, Kubescape, and the SAS is called Kubescape. It's mm -hmm. yeah. just got to kind of deal with that. Okay, yeah. So naming issues and um uh okay. Um it doesn't sound like we are ready for a vote on this one then. Decouple SAS SAS from uh the open source pieces, right? Okay. Name, naming and functionality. Okay. Quick question no. on that, because they're going to reach back out. Um, once they have that complete, are we waiting again for another sandbox review before accepting? Or is a check in with the TOC in the main channel sufficient? We should wait. We haven't voted. We so don't we, have good yeah. ways to be able to onboard um, uh, like in out of band. And we haven't voted. So right. we can't accept. OK. so. Is this going to be a question or is this, um, how are we framing this, uh, Richie? Uh, are we asking for like, okay, can you confirm that you can run the whole stack locally? No, we're pretty sure you can't. I mean, I, I, mean, I think that, I mean, they could come back and say, uh, the persistence of the data is a separate bit of functionality. This is kind of, this is effectively open core and that bit's separate, but um, I don't think we would accept projects that don't have neutral providers of these services that, you know, you could, what submit goes to their service, not the service that you configure. Okay. At the very end, there's a spec for the, and ideally, so let's go for some, right, some okay. tooling for collecting data or some something that you, some other ways that you can do if if that functionality is truly useful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we we need to ask them to watch the video too, <laughs> Amy. So. And, okay, I think we should move on based on yeah. time. Yes. Uh, where was I? Okay, here. Um, let's start from the top. Container SSH. Uh, cre creates a new container. It's useful for several things. Debugging production systems, running honeypots. Uh, I, I, think it's, 
I can give some info here. Uh, we we actually have a deployment at CERN of this, and it was just uh, to see if it works. Mm -hmm. They presented at the CNCF Research User Group, and after the presentation, there was a suggestion to submit it uh, for for a sandbox. So they okay. did it. Um, there's a, the 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 model that they want is to hide the handling of containers from mostly scientific communities where people are used to SSH to central machines where everything is installed for them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of a niche project. There's not a lot of contributors. It's um, uh, And there's something to be checked, which is it's an MIT zero license. So we also need to check that. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So it's it's it is a niche. I think it would remain a niche. Uh, at least parts of it have just been relicensed to Apache. The, the oh, lib right. container SSH is now Apache. Okay. We also have some funny like branding link. I'll paste it here. Um, I don't know exactly. There's like a branding license. Um, I don't know what that means. And uh, I'll paste the link for the their presentation. Yeah. Um... Yeah, this is fine. We'll when we are working through this, uh, whatever they have here will get uh, reworked with uh, whatever we do uh, for CNCF projects. Um, I do not have any objections. It's a tool that seems to seems to be working. And it's. I mean, I think one thing that is, is it's very small. Although it has 44 repos in the GitHub org, it's got very little, it's not a lot of code. Um, and it's not been around for very long or have a lot of contributions or stars or any of the other met metrics. And it's, it's like, it's, I mean, this is a very small tool. So like we, I, I imagine it becoming a graduated project ever. Oh. Which is not to say it's not a useful tool, but it, we have had this discussion about some things about just being very small, yeah, and and like not small things are cool. I don't disagree, but it's just like, um, yeah. is it big? En is it big enough to be a thing? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it, it, that's what we are telling them to do, right? Like, do come into the sandbox and figure it out. Um, so, if they make it to incubation, you know, then we'll worry about the graduation, right? So this project, when I went through the documentation, has a lot of really positive potential associated with it from uh, operational workflows and administration of production environments, as well as some potential significant security concerns over the execution of it, particularly around default behavior. Um, there are organizations and companies that have traditional pro uh, production level management of their clusters where you have folks that are logging into prod environments, um, SSHing directly into containers to make changes on the fly instead of um, promoting better immutability with container images in their clusters. So this is kind of set up to assist in offloading some of that behavior into a more isolated container. Um, so there's value there in organizations that already have those and getting them to change those processes. However, because it is um, a container that you're allowing someone to SSH into, um, those ports are open, there are potential additional concerns. So generally speaking, I see the value in this. Um, I'd be interested in seeing what the project does, but I would weigh heavily that they really need um, heavy security involvement um, from whatever their default configurations are and, and the overall behavior of the container within a cluster. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it also supports usage as a honeypot, which is very different use case, which is kind of confusing from the configuration point of view because uh, the configuration is somewhat different. Yeah, it looks like they have separate uh, quick starts for Docker and Kubernetes, so that's good. Um, yeah, I'm I'm happy to let them in. I think. 
there is enough value out here um, that other. Uh, I, I, I can give an end user feedback from research communities. This is what our users had been asking for for a long time. That's the main reason we looked into it. Okay. Whether it's, uh, but yeah, but it's, it is, I don't know, I think Emily expressed much better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, any other objections other than what we already talked about? We can go for a vote. I mean, arguably better in than ours if they're going to do it <laughs> anyway. We have more oversight. Right. Uh, we, we, I would rather have them close to us so we can ask them to do more security stuff. All yeah. right. Hearing no strong objections, vote is open. I, I am pushing you all in the interest of time. Yes, yes, yes I am. Thank you. <laughs> all right, yeah, Kathy, otherwise... you're sending to me directly rather than the group, but passes. Thank you. Moving on. Okay. Open FGA. This is uh, something interesting. Uh, anybody read the Zanzibar paper? Yes, a while back. Okay. So yeah. that is, so es essentially, what they are doing here is implementing the what's in the paper, and who is it from? Uh, I can't remember the startup. Okta, Okta, OKTA. That's the startup. It's Okta, Okta the yeah. auth provider. Okta. Oh, yeah, they're not a startup anymore. They're, they're not well, a startup they're, anymore. They're, yeah, no, they're, no, a big, no. they're a big grown up startup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it seems to be from Auth Zero, which I think is a subset of Okta. Yeah, Okta required Auth Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the Auth Zero folks. Yeah, see, they're right there. A project sponsored by Okta slash Auth Zero. I, I think one of the things that I read was like they they will store all the things that they use that that is in the policy, so it's easier to look up rather than running the query every time you need to run it. You know, I I took a look over this and I saw they've got multiple repos, SDKs, a contributor guide. There's a bunch of stuff going on here. The thing that caught my attention, though, was that it was started in June of this year, I think. And so it's pretty fresh. Um, that was the only thing that I really noticed that made me go, wait a minute, let me take a deeper look. And then I only got so far. Yeah. Uh, Anybody uh, else uh, notice anything else? Same, I, I, same, yeah. It could be because, you know, they might have this in their existing code base and they are taking it out and they started it once the merger happened or something. I don't know. Just guessing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, this is what I was reading. Uh, simply queried as needed is a database for relationship that govern access to resources. You have to load the data into runtime and to evaluate a policy. I'm kind of inclined that, that this is a positive thing we should encourage people to get involved with earlier yeah. rather than later. Yeah. So I'm even though it's recent, it's a, you know, it's a clearly a serious project from them and they're, 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 they've got a serious model that they're trying to implement and a model of how they're going to do it um, using APA, which is already a you know, graduated project and so on. So I'm, even though it's recent, I don't have a kind of recency bias, <laughs> unrecency bias, whatever you got very <laughs> much about this, as I would with some other things. Let's go vote then. Um, I think we have enough confidence here. One right, concern. I, uh, before we, w one concern, and I know that uh, I, I think Emily mentioned this in the DOC channel as well. So as to why this is so new, um, this is forked from from a different company actually, um, and that doesn't inspire great. Uh, um, long-term strategy or anything, at least as of now, um, there's there's a smell of a little bit of smash and grab, to be honest. Um, I don't claim to have the full background on this, but um, when looking into it, because someone poked me about it, um, it didn't inspire confidence at all. Yeah, but there is enough confidence for sandbox, but not incubation, right? So let's get it in work sorry, it's for, what's it for because it's sorry it's not visibly 
wasn't clear on the repo. But... Yeah, it's not. Um, at least last I looked, uh, no attributions have been have been given. The thing you want to look at is from uh, is spice to be from offset. Um, that's where um, part of the inspiration was coming from. Oh, did you say offset? I linked it in chat. SpiceDB. So are they using it here or uh, are they? No, so the story, okay, let, let me, let me uh, give a little bit more background. Um, I was contacted by someone who who also worked on SpiceDB in the past, and they um, they were concerned about open uh, FGA basically uh, forking their stuff without any attribution, and then submitting it to uh, to CNCF, which has an ungood smell to it. Um, in particular, unless we see Okta actually carry this forward. Um, I, I remember this now. I remember both of us looked at it. Yes. Um, Spice DB, uh, yes. Um, so yeah. Uh, so here is what they're talking about, right? Um, yeah, uh, largely inspired by graph and dispatch packages in Odzi, Odz slash Spice DB. Spice DB. Um, and it, it's Apache 2.0 license, um, so they are free to do that. Um, attributions, I think we talked about it and I opened this issue for attributions. So during Sandbox, we can work with them on making sure that the attribution are you know, better than what it is right now. So I remember the conversation now. The so, question is, if yeah. given the time since they, since they got started from the fork, and I agree that Apache 2 allows forking, is explicitly designed to allow forking in any and all uh, other um, licenses. Um, still looking at the project as of itself after the point of fork is a super short history with no strong history of contributions or community building or anything. Of course, it's literally a new thing copied I over agree from with you. Person. I would like to That's give them a chance um, to do better now. Uh, in sandbox under our guidance, um, rather than telling them to go away. Well, and it's not a requirement um, for sandbox. I think we need to make sure we're right, we're yeah. adhering to the the bar that we expect out of that. I think is what yeah. Dim's saying is like, yeah. it might not be perfect, but it's also sandbox. So you know, when we go to incubation, we can certainly list this as concerning that needs to be fixed prior to their application. Okay, so okay. let's go back to the vote. Uh, you know, please uh, feel free to do a plus zero or a minus zero uh, if you feel uh, strong. Sorry, can I give? Can you just give me another minute? Yeah. I'm just. Oh, okay. So I will not count your vote. But... No. <laughs> okay. Please, please don't. That's fine. Okay, uh, 10 more seconds. You, you can't do contingent votes on the. <laughs> it's either a plus no, 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 or a minus. Sorry. Like I love you, but I cannot track that. This is not a thing. I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm. So I was just looking at the. I mean, I was just reading through the initial commit of this is a working version and trying to see if it seemed unreasonable. I mean, it. I think for it's fine. I think it's. You know, these are both implementations of Zanzibar, both derived from something else, 
anyway and we're not being kingmakers about like mm -hmm. that i think that and it's i mean i think that yes it's got a horrible chunky initial commit but it's not all copied from supposed to be by any means so yeah i'm i'm okay with it okay so keep the previous vote okay passes and we can move on okay thank you uh how much time do you have we have 19 minutes uh so q red um so this is from vworks um and this is for uh restarting the nodes uh, so that you know you can apply some patches um We want to try to keep Qred boring and reliable so, and for better discovery by Kubernetes users. Yeah, if I look at this, this was started back all the way in 2017 um, and has been developed consistently for a long time. And I think it was originally a WeWorks project and then others started picking it up and using it. Yeah. Um, and that is probably why they're bringing it out now because there's just, it's being used and there's a lot of people who contributed to it. So I had a question about this one with yeah. there's so, given that there's so much work that's been done on this particular project, was there any consideration for including it as a Kubernetes sub project? We, we would say no, for sure, uh, Emily. That is the reason they are here. Um, So Why would you say no? Just as if, just to get your current state of. Yeah, it is just like uh, we. The focus is on the smallest set of bits that go out as a Kubernetes release, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and we do have a lot of repositories that are don't end up in uh, Kube, uh, in the release for sure. Um, but those are all small, tiny stuff. Um, you and... could feel free to send them across to Sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, Minikube, for example, right? Like yeah, that's... Minikube. Sandbox, yeah. So... Minikube could, could easily be a, a, a successful standalone CNCF project outside. Exactly. Yeah. It's only there for historic reasons. Right, right. Uh, so th th this quite a few like that and we should go back and visit it. I'll take and make a note of it. Okay. Um, so um, do we call for a vote? Anybody object? Amy? The only yeah. comment I have is that it, it seems to be one go file now, like a lot, large one. Uh, package. Uh, there seems to be more here. Uh, yeah. There's reasonable churn going on over time. They work on your Tuesdays. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I, I think it's okay, Ricardo. It's, it's they, fine. They might it's find just, other just things to do. Uh, out, they might expand out of this uh, specific use case, um, you know, when they come in. Okay. Um, plus one. So we've dealt with six of them now. Okay, Carvel. Um, this is from VMware. Um, Carvel is a project that kind of says, hey, uh, Helm is not the only thing out there. There is a few other patterns that might be better than Helm. Uh, here is a set of tools um, that work well together, Unix fashion, um, you know, for you to build up your uh, uh, deployment package. 
thingy. That's basically what I got out of this. Um, so it's the seven repos that are listed. Yeah. Uh, that are all inside Tanzu now, but would move out to a separate org. Right. And if you look at the uh, sentence here, a common pattern for Kaval users to pipe various CLI tools together. So YTT, which munges YAML files, cable, KApp, um, you know, they pipe it to each other, essentially, like, so the YTT is usable separately, or you can combine it with other tools. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, an easy way to think about this is Helm is a package manager in the traditional sense, right? Yes. You, it's like apt or um, homebrew or yum or any of these, yes. and it's designed for packages. This is more, and, and so there's a lot in what makes a package manager. This is yeah. a bunch of tools that are small slices of things that you can use standalone or pipe into each other in different ways. Yeah. Um, it's a different way of, of working with your stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, they've given uh, what each of these does and the K app controller is one which understands what a package is. And you can, I guess you can do an update uh, to newer versions, rollback and things like that too. So it's kind of like gives you the GitOps model there, I think. Uh, and there is something, there's a controller for secret generation too. So there is an image package. There is the K app controller for development and packaging. Uh, so the thing here is, uh, yeah, they also have something where they, uh, they can understand, they can migrate Helm packages to Parallel packages as well. I don't think they called it out here. Um, and there is, you know, sufficiently big team working on this and they want to now come here and see if they can do more stuff in the community. So there is a story about, you know, standalone packages. There is a story about, uh, you know, can I upgrade a package, downgrade a package, uh, that kind of stuff. Um, there is a migration-ish thing from Helm or to, uh, yeah, see, image package can be used with Helm to make Helm charts air, graph friend, air gap friendly. Um, so there is lots of ideas out here um, that that is useful to, people who want to ship their applications. Out of interest, how, how many people are using it now? Is it something that you, you kind of ship with Tanzu and then encouraging people to use as an experiment or as halfway uh, I, Because I know it's, been around for, it's been around for a few years and I've heard about it before. I haven't spent much time looking into it. Adoption and things, I'm just kind of curious. Yeah, I don't think they mentioned adoption numbers here, but in you know, anecdotally, I, I know quite a few people use it. Um, people outside of VMware using outside it? Outside of VMware, yeah. Okay. Uh, it, it definitely the standalone tools, even if you don't buy into the K app controller stuff, yeah. um, the standalone tools um, are definitely used outside. So it's a bet um, to see if they can do better than Helm. And if they do, it's a win-win for everyone. If they don't, you know, there is still options for people who like uh, another way of doing things uh, outside of Helm. Okay, any objections here? Okay, Amy. Yeah. It's open. Thank you much. Thank you. Okay, 719, Unicraft. Uh, I have to give this to you, Justin. <laughs> What's up with uh, Unicurnals? Uh, have you seen this before? I have seen this. This has been around for quite a long time, actually. Um, I haven't looked at it very recently. Um, 
but it's been around for um i mean it's been a it's been around for i think so well the thing says it's already a linux foundation project and it's been around for four years yeah it uh, it says it's part of the it's part of zen oh this is going to be complicated so this is going to be complicated oof okay I, I think we pass on this one just for the moment because we're not quite sure how to be able to do shared between the two projects. Um, and I hate yeah. that that's the answer, but I think that's the answer. Yeah. Are, are, are yeah, we, hold, please. <laughs> yeah, hold, please. Are, 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 um, we sure, are we sure it's a Zen project? Just, uh, sorry, I just... Oh, yeah, please please double check for me. Thank you. Uh, uh, it, that's what it says here, right? Zen project? What is, it, it says that I noticed, but on the page, that's the broken 404. Uh, not on the home page. Um, I think it might be well be because a lot of these unicornal projects were Zen projects See, because a lot Zen of them Pro used. It's under Zen it. project slash Unicraft, right? Okay. Okay. Well, I think yeah. We we have to we have to defer so we understand if this is a. A move out of Zen, and if so, yep. Uh, well, I mean, which is potentially something we could do because it's already like I think we need to fit it into that model of what what it's doing. Is it is it is it, is it moving? Is it trying to be both? Is it, what's it doing? Yes. Um, so let's take it out of the. You know. That's my note. They're already a Linux Foundation project. We do not yet have a way to be able to share project between the foundations. Right. Uh, so, at this point, they can move. Uh, you know, if uh, I mean, but if if they're, I mean, we could clarify because they could well be asking to move because they think CNCF is a better home than Zen. And that's fine, them. but they need to be a little bit more clear about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and there's an open issue issue to be able to do so as well. So I'll link to the issue as well, Emily. So it says can act as a CNCF project, but you know, if they're acting as what they yeah, are and a CNCF project, that's probably not going to work at this yeah, point. Uh, okay, uh, moving on. Um, since we are short on time, thank you, Lima. Um, so again, Justin. Uh, I mean, Lima. yeah. I so, say, um. Um, Lima is a component. Lima was thinking about joining as a container D sub project, and then it decided the sandbox was more appropriate. It's, um, I mean, it sounds weird as, as a, a cloud native project, as a project that's for creating VMs on Macs. Um, but the, I mean, the context is it's for building part of a tool it's part of a, the base tooling for creating development environments for running container engines on Macs. but it, it still is weird that it's a it's basically a tool for running vms on max which just yeah and, and it runs on linux it, it, too today so you can create it, linux vms on linux with it for it and yeah. basically the same way you do on mac and i guess i haven't tried it but netbsd as well it says i've done both linux and mac with this yeah um, uh, again, this is in the same league as, you know, Docker for sure. And, uh, uh, well, top. What, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, the, the, uh, it started, I started noticing this more when people started, um, you know, figuring out, uh, how their, um, Docker subscriptions would work, right? Like alternate so, Docker. Docker I, I, I can talk a little bit about this. Um, if you're using Rancher Desktop on Mac or Linux, you're actually using Lima under the hood. It provides a better user, well, I would argue a better, a graphical user experience on top of uh, Lima with a bunch of additions. And Lima primarily targeted initially um, container D and nerdy control work. Um, nerdy control being a sub project under container D. And it expanded as people wanted to do more, like there's co Lima that I think runs Moby instead of container D. Um, we started doing things in Rancher Desktop with it where we brought in uh, container D or Moby and K3S 
and there's other people doing other things on top of it. And ultimately, their reason for wanting to bring it into the CNCF is so that it lives in a vendor neutral home because it already has multiple vendors contributing to it and as maintainers. And that's the, their reason is they want a, the vendor neutral home to own it rather than it being somebody's project up on GitHub with different vendors contributing to it. I, I, and they felt it was more appropriate to be sandboxed than a container D project because it's yep. kind of not core container D. Yep. And, so and a... Yeah, the submitter for it is one of the container D maintainers. Mm -hmm. And I think he's the, the heaviest author to nerdy control. Um, Uh, this was Akihiro Suda, right? Um, yeah. Named, uh, yeah, the email slightly different. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes it is. It is. Oh, good. Um, so it, they know our ecosystem inside out, you know, having worked yeah. on with multiple projects. So, like, I have like no hesitation uh, asking, you know, giving them space here for Sandbox. Um, uh, any objections? Okay, vote, please. Vote is open, and this is pretty much all we have time for today, I believe. Oof, okay, L let me just do a quick scan here in Murbridge. We have four quick... minutes. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Capsule Wharf is, is just a couple of days old. Oh. Was this a resubmission? Which one? OPCR, mm. uh, Open Policy. I, I have questions about this one anyway, because, it, it, I, you know, are they submitting everything because they operate a registry and they have a policy client? Are they just submitting the client or are they submitting the client and registry? I, I wasn't clear on that when I was looking at this. Oh, and if so, they want to keep the, the registry and we have the client, then that's something to call into question. So, Matt, feel free to ping them, ask these questions and ask them to update it. OK, will do. OK, thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone. Right. Yep. Thank Save. you all. Save you back three minutes. <laughs> thanks. Take care.